A Hiker's Guide to Plants of the Desert Southwest, including cactus, wildflowers, native trees, interesting bushes, and the agave family. You'll learn where to find them, how to identify them, when flowers and fruit are available, and which ones are edible. Hey hikers, this is Kurt Papke coming to you from Tucson, Arizona. I'm very excited today to begin the first in an entire series of videos that I plan to make on a hiker's guide to the plants of the desert southwest. My hope is, is that this series will help guide you to identify and understand a little bit about the role that uh, these cacti played both in uh, Native American survival in terms of uh, shelter and food and how they can help you as you're along the trail. And I'm beginning the series with uh, a series in, in and of itself on cactus. And I'm gonna be doing the saguaro cactus, the organ pipe, the barrel, the cholla, the prickly pear, the hedgehog, and the pincushion cactus. So the saguaro is big enough and complex enough that I'm actually dedicating an entire video to the saguaro cactus. And uh, I'm coming to you from an ideal spot to, uh, to introduce this cactus. I'm coming to you from Saguaro National Park, the, uh, the west unit in the Tucson Mountains, just west of Tucson, Arizona. So without further ado, Today's topic, the saguaro cactus. Saguaros are easy to recognize. They are the iconic huge cactus from the old western movies, looking like someone standing with their hands up. These giants can get to be over 40 feet tall. The arms that make them so easy to recognize typically start to develop at about 70 years of age, around the same time that they start to flower but some never develop any at all. Others are prolific developing arms on their arms. No one knows exactly why some do or don't get arms, but the advantage of having them is growth and flowers both happen at the arm tips. So more arms, more flowers, more seeds, more offspring. A saguaro can have as many as 50 arms, including arms of arms, of course. Look for new arm buds on saguaros. They start out as a split in the skin, then a small bud pokes its way out, and the cactus is on its way to developing a full-blown arm. Here's the same bud eight years later. Note that the arms that were already developed have grown quite a bit, but the new bud is now about 16 inches long. It grew about two inches per year. Swaros grow incredibly slowly. They start out by taking almost a decade to grow an inch or two. Then they speed up and start to grow an inch a year or so. Once they start to develop arms, they slow down as their energy goes into growing sideways as well as up. The average lifespan is 150 to 175 years, but they may last over 200 years. When they die, they leave behind these skeletons, which can last decades. So this is a saguaro skeleton. He still has a, a little bit of his arms left, and uh, these guys are very, very strong and very, very pliable for their, their weight. So they give uh, tremendous support to this cactus. It's pretty well loosened up now because the, uh, the roots have rotted, as have all the guts. But uh, this particular skeleton uh, has been bleached by the sun. Uh, the ribs are normally a little bit darker color. But uh, these guys very much outlive the, the cactus itself. Uh, they can last for decades uh, out in the blazing Arizona sun whereas the flesh on the inside of the cactus disappears pretty quickly once it dries out. This is a short piece of saguaro skeleton. It basically has uh, two ribs here, so it's going to be a little stronger than normal. But uh, these things are really tough. Uh, they really they bend a little bit, but really not much at all. And uh, they're incredibly strong and very, very lightweight. You can see that this is uh, going to provide a tremendous amount of support 
for the, uh, for the Suaro, even in very, very high winds. A very high strength to weight ratio on this, which is why they were used for uh, roofs and, uh, and other types of building materials, uh, because they are so strong and so lightweight. They also leave behind boots, or the scar tissue made by birds, typically woodpeckers, that build their nest in the cavity. Native Americans use these boots as water buckets. I've seen some incredibly beautiful pieces of artwork created out of these Suaro skeletons. All I can say is, do not be tempted to collect these from private or public property. Purple martins love to nest in the Suaro holes left behind by woodpeckers. In fact, Arizona is one of the few areas of the United States where you don't have to put up purple martin houses because there's plenty of spots for them in the Suaros. Suaro, organ pipe, and barrel cacti all have pleated sides like an accordion. This allows them to expand and contract according to water intake. A single Suaro can take in as much as 200 gallons of water in a summer monsoon afternoon rainstorm, which can dump several inches of rain on the desert in just a couple of hours. Poor little cactus, desperately trying to hang on here in the flash flood. Speaking of which, the Suaro has very shallow roots, less than a foot deep, but they can extend out a radius of 100 feet. If you're persistent, you can find crestated suaros. These have unusual formations near the very top of the cactus. These are caused by a virus. Where do you find these guys? They grow well between 1 and 3,000 feet of elevation on south-facing slopes. Hey, I'm in the uh, Gila River canyons on a uh, south-facing slope. And as you can see behind me, there's a very large population of mature, very happy swaros. And that is very typical. Um, swaros are very picky when it comes to the environment in which they can survive. They don't uh, tolerate cold very well. And south-facing slopes, of course, are going to be warmer due to the direct sunshine. And they're also... Um, going to shed the cold air at night. Uh, cold air sinks, so at the uh, end of every day, uh, as the temperature cools down, the cold air sinks down into the bottom of the canyon and flows past the cactus, but uh, doesn't linger there. So you won't see a lot of swaros uh, at the bottom of this uh, canyon, but uh, you'll see a tremendous number of them uh, up along the southern slopes. They are widespread around southern Arizona, but the best place to see them is in the 140 square miles of Tucson Suaro National Park. The east unit of the park is best for backpacking, and the west unit for day hikes or drive-bys, and has a great visitor center where you can have arguably the best view of a hillside of Suaro cacti. Catalina State Park in Oro Valley has some great trails with many ancient specimens. You'll also notice numerous photos of Suaros in the Tortolita Mountains, which has great free hiking trails, and Picacho Peak State Park has super spring wildflowers that accent the Suaro cacti nicely. Suaros are highly protected. It's illegal to cut them down or move them without a permit. When builders clear the desert for a new development, they have to work around the old soldiers and sequester the movable cacti, which they then sell to the new homeowners. So Swaro cacti are highly protected here in Arizona. Um, it is a state crime to injure them or uh, transport them without a permit. But uh, there are actually uh, more Swaro cacti in Pima County where I live, the county that envelops Tucson, then there are human souls. So uh, why is it so important to protect them? Uh, well, they're under constant pressure from competing interests in the land. The ecosystems where the Suaro cacti grow uh, obviously can be used for other purposes. 
Um, but uh, it's important to protect them despite their numbers because uh, their numbers can slip uh, very quickly and there's a concern that that's happening. Uh, it's estimated that only one year in 10 uh, will, uh, has the right environmental conditions, the right amount of rainfall and lack of freezing that allows uh, Swiro cacti to germinate and grow. And also they, they take a, almost 100 years to grow to maturity. So they are the true century plant. So given that only one in every 10 years uh, allows reproduction and the fact that they take so long to mature means that they could very easily and very quickly be wiped out here in the Sonoran Desert. So uh, it's vitally important that we protect them. Uh, there's always economic interests to be balanced, but uh, they're an important resource uh, here uh, in Southern Arizona and uh, they have a right to live here too. It's a special time when the swaros flower, typically April through June. The white flowers are pollinated by bats, white-winged doves, and bees. Bats fly and feed only at night, which is why the swaro has white flowers. The blossoms, which are the Arizona state flower, only last one night. The fruits were very special to the Tono Otham tribe. They used a rib to knock them off, ate them fresh, dried, or made wine from them. Each fruit has about 35 calories, and about 20% of that is from the seeds. The swaro is unique for hikers because it's one of the few cactus fruit you can snack on without worrying about getting thorns in your fingers. All right, time to chow down on a little swaro. Mmm, crunchy, sweet. It's kind of, kind of like eating a candy bar. It's really, really tasty. Now, I understand why the Native Americans like that so much. What's, what a treat. So one of the things the swaro cactus is very helpful for uh, here in Arizona is uh, grabbing just a few minutes of shade. So if you're getting ready to take a sip of water or uh, have a little snack, you can just step onto the shady side of a swaro and now I have instant shade. And uh, that's pretty nice here in Arizona because there aren't uh, there aren't many trees uh, or sheltered areas where you can grab a little bit of shade. So the swaros are big, are massive enough and wide enough that you can actually get a few moments of, of time out of the sun and uh, give your skin a little break and uh, maybe cool off a little bit before you have to step back out into the sun again. So swaros, great for a minute or two of shade. Swaros propagate only through seeds. Cuttings don't work, unlike many other cactus species. It's estimated that only one year in 10 has conditions that allow any of the 2,000 seeds in each fruit to sprout and survive. So both Palo Verde and uh, Mesquite perform uh, very important functions for cacti, the swaro cacti. Uh, they're called mother trees. You can see there's uh, two small swaros. One may be uh, 50 years old, the smaller one may be 25, 30 years old. The uh, Palo Verde in this case, or in some cases a mesquite, um, actually protect the swaros uh, both from being, both mechanically in terms of being grazed by horses, cows, uh, whatever. So they, they protect it mechanically, and they also provide environmental cover uh, for the young swaro uh, while it's in its formative years. It keeps it uh, uh, 10 to 15 degrees cooler during the summertime beneath the tree, um, and uh, that really helps the, uh, the swaros get, uh, get started early on in life. So uh, mesquite and palo verde, mother trees for the swaros, very important part of their uh, their function here in the desert ecosystem. So most people, when they think of swaros, they think of the tall, statuesque cacti and with their arms raised to their sides, like in the classic westerns. Uh, but these little guys are the most important swaro cacti 
These are the towering giants of tomorrow. Hopefully someday my great-grandchildren will hike this trail and these will be towering saguaro cacti. But for now, they are tiny budding young saguaros that uh, in this case are in kind of a delicate spot. They don't have a mother tree protecting them. Uh, they do have this rock here, which I guess helps a little bit, but uh, they also have to contend with the fact that they're right next to each other. You normally don't see two, uh, two saguaros growing right next to each other this close. Um, they just uh, physically, um, there isn't enough water normally, and also the abrasion of the, of the two stems against each other. Uh, my guess is 100 years from now, when you come back, only one of these will have survived. So uh, here we are with the, uh, with the young saguaro cacti. And um, right in front of me is a nice uh, fish hook barrel cactus. Uh, it's easy to distinguish the two, even though they, they look somewhat similar physically uh, at this point because they're of a similar size. The fish hook cactus has the red spines to it with the curvature on the ends, whereas the saguaro cacti uh, have shorter spines and they all um, they're only about, uh, oh, maybe uh, they're all under, under an inch or so in length, whereas the fishhook uh, cactus spines are about twice that size. Um, also, you can start to see, even at this age, they're starting to distinguish e each other from each other in terms of their uh, physical appearance. The uh, barrel cactus is more barrel shaped, more rounder, wider, whereas the saguaro is uh, more slender at this stage. One last note about saguaros. You can get some cute photographs by having your subject pose in the same way as a cactus.